Good morning, First Christian. How are we enjoying summer? It is here, I agree, yes. This is the official movement for the summer. We are so glad that you are with us today, and if you're watching from home on our live stream, we're glad that you have joined us. If you'll take a look at our church calendar and some items in the bulletin, you will see that today is Vision Sunday. So you're going to hear from a few different voices today. And then this afternoon, there is going to be a, um, a Tune Our Hearts Hymn Festival at Forest Hills. And this is brought to you by Miss Casey. So she's going to come up and share a few words. I just want to give you a brief overview. A lot of you like the... Um, a lot of the timeless hymns of our faith, the praise to the Lord, the amazing graces, and things of that nature. And a lot of you like to sing, and a lot of you like to hear choral music. Uh, the Church Musicians Guild, which is a group of about 10 to 12 area church musicians, is meeting today um, to bring together four to five church choirs and congregations from all over this area. We're going to be presenting about three choral anthems, five hymn arrangements, and even have a hymn sing um, at your request at the end. So if that's something you enjoy and enjoy being around a lot of sound and music, come join us today at Forest Hills Baptist. Um, I hope to see many of you there. I know you'll be fed by it. That sounds great. They're going to take requests. That's awesome. Um, and we just want to remind everybody that Ark of Wilson will continue to meet uh, in our fellowship hall as we go throughout this week. So if you're coming down to the church, just keep in mind, there are going to be a whole bunch of kids having fun down here. Uh, I wish you um, to have a great worship with us today. Let's join together as we, what do we do next? We're singing. I've got my pages mixed up. We have a prelude. We're going to listen to Casey.
Please stand and join me in the call to worship and continue standing for the hymn of praise and prayer. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. May we pray together. Loving creator of the world and all that is in and around it, we pray to you this morning to visit us once again with the same spirit that inspired the first followers of Jesus to face great challenges, to follow his teachings no matter what, and to have a clearer view of our future together as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Unite us in these goals and dreams and visions that we might be your faithful, loving people. In Jesus' name, amen.
children. Here they come. Here they come. And here comes Brooklyn. Brooklyn says, maybe. Come on, Brooklyn, my buddy. Oh, yes, we have. Now, don't poke yourself in the eye with this. I just like these because these were very colorful. Whoa. Whoa. Look at them. Yes. Yes, don't poke yourself, though. Wow. I thought they were cool. I wanted spoons, but... That's all I could find, so we'll, we'll be very careful. But we're going to talk about food. That's why you have a fork. I, I bet you've had an had a opportunity to go to a party, right? Yes, and somebody served you some food. And I, I bought one serving piece. You, you might be served a cookie or a piece of pizza or something. Yeah, you like pizza. I do, too. You don't? Oh, my goodness. I'll forgive you for it, though. Um, suppose I tried to scoop out some ice cream with this. You think I'd be very successful? Yeah, probably I would because I love some ice cream. But, <laughs> but have you ever seen an ice cream scoop? It's more rounded, you know, and it can make a nice little rounded ice cream. There's all kinds of serving pieces. And they're different, but what's unique about them, even though they're different? They all serve food, right? And we love some food. But today we're going to talk about something else we serve, actually a person we serve, even though we're all different and we have different talents and abilities, we're all here to serve who? Very good. We're all here to serve God. And, you know, as we're gathering today and we're talking about our vision and we're just hoping that the Spirit is moving in all of us so that we can serve God. And you know I love music, even though I can't sing. But we're not going to sing it. We're just going to say it. This is a little song, Hold On to Jesus by Aaron O'Donnell. And I'm going to say a verse, phrase, and then you're going to repeat it after me, including all the big children. You got this? You ready? I wish I could protect you. From the, life, from the worries of this life. But if there's one thing I could tell you, it's no matter what you do, hold on to Jesus. He's holding on to you. Hold on to Jesus. Very good. Let's thank the big children. Yay, big children. Okay, let's bow our heads for prayer, please. Dear God, thank you for all the diverse talents and abilities among our congregation. Help us to recognize that we are all different, but we are all here to serve you. Amen. Thanks so much for coming. Now, don't run with those forks, okay? Walk. Here are our gathered concerns as we enter a time of gathered prayer. Keith Brenner is hospitalized in Wilson, so we pray for our friends 
Keith, and Sherry. Maggie Peterson, for whom we have prayed constantly, has passed away. We pray for relief from hurt, heartache, and sadness for Maggie's family, which extends into our congregation this morning. We pray for Reverend Carney Hedgepath, lead pastor at Arthur Christian Church in Bell Arthur, North Carolina, for his family and for his congregation. Reverend Hedgepath suffered life-threatening injuries in a motor vehicle accident last week. He grew up in his church and has served it many years. Alice Thomas has fallen, so we pray for healing, comfort, patience, and courage. And we pray that God will whisper in her ear that she will be all right. Leslie Kendall has asked for her daughter-in-law, Harley Bissett, who will have surgery tomorrow morning. Harley and daughter Riley are VBS regulars. We also remember this morning friends and neighbors and loved ones listed in today's bulletin. Dalen, Lucas, Ben, Riley, J.R., Bill, Doug, Cliff, Troy, Charlotte, A.J., Mac, Christy, and Sim. We now commend those we have named and others in our thoughts to God's compassionate regard. We pray that their care, renewal, and healing and comfort. Jamie will bring our silent remembrances to a close with his pastoral prayer. May we pray. Eternal God, our creator, our savior, and our friend, you have welcomed us into your house of worship this day through singing and listening, through praying, through fellowship, through teaching and wisdom, through sharing in communion, and doing all the things that we will do as we gather in this building together today. You have united us once again. And you have united us with your spirit. Who we seek in the deepest recesses of our hearts. Who we seek as we walk down the streets and look into the eyes of your children, our brothers and sisters those we work with, those we live with, those who are closest to us and those we will never know. Remind us over and over again, O oh God, that when we look at our brothers and sisters, that we are looking into your eyes and that your eyes look back at us as they share life with us. God, you hear our prayers so often that we almost forget how close you are to us. But once again, we ask you to be with those we have named this morning, those who are sick, those who grieve, those who are at home recovering from injuries sustained, those who are at home alone, and all of us who are so fortunate this morning. All right, we ask, O oh God, that you be with us as well. May your healing for these people 
your comfort for these people come from us as well as from you. May we surround them with our prayers and with our love and with any gifts which you give us with which to minister to them. Touch each one of them in a way that they will receive what they need and that they will recognize that you are with them. Bless this church, O oh God, in this time in between, in between a former pastor and a new pastor coming. May we as a church not lose sight of our hopes and our dreams and our visions. May we as a church be inspired to be the best of your people that we can be. May we see visions, may we dream dreams, and then may we act so that the whole world is impacted by what we do on our little corner of this universe. Bless us, O oh God, that whatever we do, we may do it with the knowledge that you walk with us and that you work through us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Joel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and chapter 2, 28 and 29. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Pethuel, Hear this, O elders, give ear, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? Tell your children of it and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning again. We are here today to share some updates from our vision teams. But before they come forward, I want to take us back a little bit to help us remember how we got here. Two years ago, Gary was supposed to go on a sabbatical, and it got canceled because of COVID. He took the time, but he didn't get to do any of the plans. But part of his plans included a consultation it was a gift to us as part of his sabbatical. And that consultation 
led to us, gave us time to come together to do some daydreaming, to do some thinking, for our old men to have visions and our young men to have visions and all the other folks in between. It gave us time to sit back and examine what do we want in the future? What are our plans? Where are we going? What do we want to do? How do we want to connect to the community? How do we want to support each other but still try some new things? I tried to find all sorts of fun quotes about vision and it, it just tied into a bunch of CEO stuff. And then I saw that song that these guys sang right at the very beginning. Show us a new life in your breathtaking view. Grant us insight. May we dream challenging dreams of both depth and precision. I think that's what you're going to hear from our vision team leaders. They're each going to come forward, share a little bit about what they've been working on, and then we're going to wrap up by asking you to join us. I think first we have up is Bob. Come on down. When sign-up sheets were passed around the church to enroll individuals to draft a state of the church, it attracted three people, me, myself, and I. We got along well enough during the two months of work, and the project is now done, all 19 pages of it. Four peer reviewers have scrubbed the report, and a fifth review is just ahead. First Christian Church, uh, among congregations everywhere, is battling powerful spiritual and cultural quakes that are unimaginably more challenging than moving the pulpit Bible across Tarboro Street a long time ago. The profiles of churches in today's spiritual marketplace, from megachurches to the smallest rural congregation, disclose a tumultuous climate where stability is a falling virtue. State of the church reports like MRIs are objective appraisals of health. According to this one, now that we've read the film of First Christian Church, we know that some infirmities have appeared that require immediate and dramatic intervention. Knowing is a good thing. Maybe it's the very best of things, because knowing is the perfect place to start to restore good health. So the state of the report is essential reading. The report began 17 years ago in 2005 with a previous consultation and all the needs it identified and all the answers it provided. Maybe you remember it. Our new mission statement together with our neighbors around God's bountiful table sharing a life of love and service created the spiritual air from which the work drew its breath. As careful readers, you will discover that the issues in 2005 and 2022 are remarkably similar. Most have grown in size over 17 years for many reasons, some of our own making and some far, far beyond our control. In spite of our best remedies, here we are again, trying to reinvent ourselves in ways that will deliver us successfully through ways of change. So what happened? The answer has everything to do with the nature of change and how quickly it has accelerated. The State of the Church report is a real page turner. So read thoughtfully, your copy is coming soon. Some of us who have had MRIs sometimes anticipate the results with great dread. 
This report is nothing to fear. It simply presents what is real. Hope is the belief that our future can be better than our past. And we have a role to play in making the future a reality. As readers, you will be the ones to assign hope to what you read. For First Christian Church, 2022 is certainly not the year we return to the normal we've always known. Sadly, that will never happen. According to predictions that forecast the unprecedented acceleration of change, normals just won't last very long anymore. Instead, they will be short-lived moments, changing and then changing again at pedal to the metal speed. The normal that we envision for our church this morning has an expiration date. Our future depends on having the inexhaustible energy and boundless foresight to, influ uh, excuse me, to influence forces around us faster than ever before. That's what these vision teams who are about to report are doing with great energy, foresight, and urgency. The years ahead, the next three, not the next 10 or the next 50, will be critically important in directing our future. All of us, rather than some of us, must choose to engage change together in new ways. Me, myself, and I wrote this report, and we've read it a dozen times, and we choose a hopeful future. The next committee was on the Constitution and bylaws. And we also have three members, but our members are Patsy Farrell, Phyllis Leary, and myself. We have met and reviewed the current versions of the Constitution, which was last updated in August of 2002, and the bylaws, which was last updated in January of 2015. We have completed our first draft, which includes revisions to have these documents better match the current state of our congregation and using the same terminology in both documents that, so the Constitution matches changes that were made in the revisions to the bylaws in 2015. We have a few questions to resolve and then we'll be ready to submit our recommendations. I'm on the IUT website team, and um, our team includes Trevor Dilty and David Scott and a few others. And what we're trying to do is put our walls beyond what we have here. In other words, we want to put what we have going on um, and make it accessible to all of those searching for a place like ours today. Uh, used to, I'm sure that the phone directory was the target way of finding a place or word of mouth. And a lot of times today, people go to the web. If you, me, <laughs> want to figure out how to propagate your tomato plant, what do you do? Google, how do I propagate my tomato plant? Um, same thing here. If people are searching for a church family, specifically one like ours that is open and inclusive, we want to make sure that that is reflected on our website and anywhere that they search. Also, we have made our website very transparent so that if anyone is looking to come here that has um, accessibility issues, they can go and see where our ramps lie. They can see that we have hearing devices to help better hear and worship, that we have pews with insets that you won't feel excluded, and you will know that you will have a place in worship. And all of that comes with photographs and clear determination on our website. We are also working on our keywording so that if people are searching for a Disciples of Christ congregation in Eastern North Carolina, in Wilson, North Carolina, an open and inclusive congregation, all of these things will hopefully point to our congregation and so that people can see that. 
Um, we are working on YouTube and making that very user-friendly with announcements at the beginning for our members that may be homebound so that they are very clear on what's happening in the life of our congregation. One thing we've also been doing are QR codes, and those are the weird little barcode-looking things that you may see. And while they may not be um, very accessible to some of you all, um, when we came to the Pride Day event, one QR code had over 50 scans that took them directly to our website with a message from Jamie Brame and a way for them to learn more about our congregation. And over half of those folks don't have a church home and they are seeking one. And that is a way to go beyond our walls. And one last thing that we are, have done is um, if you are on Instagram, that is something that you may not have a clue about and that's fine. But if you are trying to reach another generation of folks that are on their phones a lot, sometimes you have to go where they are and where myself included lie a lot of times. It is not a us they thing. A lot of times it's all of us. So we have created an Instagram account that helps better for folks to see the faces in their congregation before they even step foot in here. They don't want to see the sanctuary. They want to see a friendly face and people having fun at VBS and Reverend Brain cracking up on doing dance moves or something that's fun and realize that we are a place of welcome and inclusivity. And so those are the things that we are really targeting and working on with an open mind and heart. Good morning. Our team is tasked with reaching out to other churches and community organizations to create opportunities for church members to participate in meaningful missions about which we're all passionate. And our team consists of Jack and Jackie Clifford, Mary Louise Gray, Carol Steffa, and myself. Strengthening our current partnerships and those which, with which we have had important relationships historically seem to be the best place for us to begin. For example, the ARC is using our facility again this summer for its day camp. So we've reached out, our team members have reached out to Hope Station, to CHU, to The Spot, and to the Disciples Regional Office to see how our church can offer more support right now. The Soup Kitchen and the Wesley Shelter have been supported by many individuals in this church over the years, and we encourage continued support for those groups. There are abundant gifts and talents within our First Christian family, and there's much meaningful work to do right now alongside these old friends of ours. And many other worthwhile nonprofit organizations operate in the Wilson community. The congregation was introduced to a number of these during a panel discussion several months ago, forming strong partnerships with organizations whose needs best match up with First Christians' assets and our capacity to support these groups remains a top priority. The search will continue in the coming weeks and months and we invite you to come and join us help in this task. Just a few words about some of these organizations with whom we share a current relationship. I'm gonna start and then Carol's gonna follow up. Quite a few years ago, a group of local philanthropists came to First Christian with the idea to establish an innovative nonprofit after school program. All they needed was a home. First Christian said yes, and the spot found its very first home right here. While they no longer live here, the spot's mission to share positive outcomes together with kids and their families matches perfectly with our objective to reach out to children and our families in our own neighborhood. When the after-school program resumes in the fall at the spot, there will be many volunteer opportunities. Reading to children. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Teaching about special interests, skills, games, and hobbies, providing musical experiences, and fulfilling occasional requests such as assisting with a take-home meal program. 
We have a church full of folks with special skills and talents, and we could very positively impact the lives of these children. Um, Carol's going to share a little bit more about some of these groups. Um, Chu, Chu is a community organization that we have supported strongly in the past. And because of the changes due to COVID, we're having to do this in a different way. This is one of the things that we've already highlighted and talked about how we've had to change how we serve. Um, you know, when I first started volunteering with Chu, we were side by side in the back hallway. I was there with Henry and Sue Newcomb and with Val Deans, and there were other teams who gathered in that hallway. And we were literally side by side while we were preparing the bags and doing our work. But because of COVID, we couldn't gather together anymore. So during that time, Gay and Ron Cook took care of filling the bags and making sure they got to the school so that the children could have food on the weekends. Now we are serving through the summer program. We are serving one family delivering groceries on a weekly basis. So you can become supportive and involved with this by giving monetary donations and by volunteering time to help us as we assist the family during the summer months. Hope Station is another organization that we have partnered with that serves the needs of children and families in our community through the food pantry and through the family shelter. There is need for volunteers at the pantry, for donations of healthy food items to fill the shelves, and for opportunities to provide meals to the residents of the family shelter and the men's shelter. We have a couple of teams in the church beyond the vision team that are currently working on a food drive for the summer. And on August the 27th, there will be a church-wide cookout that we will reach out to our neighbors locally here. And it'll be an opportunity for people to bring more donations for the food drive as we celebrate the summer food drive for Hope Station and CHU. These are just a few of the first steps that our team is making towards serving the needs of children in our community. We hope to continue to serve and explore new ways to partner with others in the community as we seek to serve Christ and our neighbors beyond these walls. And the symbol of Leslie and I being here together is we're in partnership and we want our team to be in partnership with our community and we invite you to be in partnership with us as we seek to serve on behalf of Christ from this place. You can tell the enthusiasm of all of these folks that have served on a vision team whether it's Bob himself and himself, or a group that are dedicated to reaching out to the community. It takes vision, but it also takes work. If we don't put things into action, it's just daydreaming. We could all sit there and say, that sounds good, keep going, or we could join in. And that's what we're gonna ask you to do as we pick back up in the fall. It's time to take a break. These guys have worked hard. A 19-page report. I'm going to need a snack as I read through that one. <laughs> but I know what's in that report is important. As we hear Carol and Leslie talk about their excitement in working and supporting with the children, we need to do the same. Vision takes action. And I hope you'll join us as we continue these vision dreams in the fall. God is good. All the time. I believe in assigning blame where it belongs. So uh, that was enough of a sermon. But my wife, <laughs> where are you, Renee? Where, where is Renee? Oh, you're so short. That's right. 
<laughs> she said, you really ought to say something after that. And I was like, no, they, that's a good sermon right there. I, I kind of knew what some of the folks were going to say because I've sat in on some of these meetings. But Renee said, no, people will want to hear something from you. So I, I said, well, when the little black book comes out, I think you're in luck because it's not so much me as it is the wisdom of the ages. Um, I love collecting uh, wise sayings. It's, uh, I try to take a little bit of time at least once a week, and uh, I'll do something like go to favoritequotes.com or some weird, uh, weird website like that because that's what I do. Once I learned the web, I quit buying books because I said, I get books to get information and look at all the information here. I never would have gotten out of my room if I had computers. I would have been one of those folks. I never would have gotten out of my room because there's so much information. Now, you have to be careful because some of it's not true. But uh, when, you're, when you're reading uh, what I call the old masters, I think you're in, in good, safe company. There was a guy when I was growing up, there was a guy named Albert Einstein. Does anybody remember Albert Einstein? <laughs> um, and wh when I was in school, you know, our teachers used to quote Albert Einstein. And we just thought that Albert Einstein was the greatest mind that had ever lived, and, and very well may have been. He was a scientist, though, and uh, our other brother is the scientist in the family, so I didn't think I had to listen because I wasn't going to be a scientist. And uh, so mathematician, not me, not me. That's Todd and Joel but, uh, and Carla. They're all, they all know what to do with numbers. I can add and subtract, and that's what I need to be able to do. So... A few years ago, I discovered that Albert Einstein was not just a great thinker in the, in the world of physics and science, but that he was a man who spent some time thinking about the world and life. He went deeper than just, just the, the basics of, you know, these theorems and these things and these formula. He thought deeply about the world. And he said something uh, that I copied down several years ago, and I, I think we need to hear it today. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Now, I say that as just a, not really a warning, because warning sounds kind of like something bad is going to happen, but it's going to happen, you know. Uh, but kind of a, 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 maybe a prophecy. How's that? That's a good biblical word. Uh, be prepared. There's going to be some new thinking. There already is some new thinking about how we approach some of these things. Uh, sometimes we approach uh, seemingly bad news with dread, don't we? You know, oh no, how soon before we're not going to be able to do any of this anymore? Instead of saying, I wonder what it's going to look like in five years. I wonder what it's going to look like in ten years. Would you have ever imagined that y'all would have moved these pews? <laughs> I don't have any idea what kind of discussions there were when that started happening. But, you know, some of the pews are holy. What if we just got, we play, broke even and moved them all? We don't know. We don't know. You know, what would it be like if we were all sitting in a big circle in chairs? We'll make sure they're comfortable. Okay, it's not going to happen with me, so I'll quit saying we. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, look at all this space up here. I've got so much room to wander. They tell me up there in the balcony, don't wander too far because, you know, we don't want the cameras to, <laughs> to have to break or anything. But... Think about that. I, I was sitting here thinking, what if, what if we could, <laughs> what, I love directors, uh, what, if, you know, what if we were looking at screens or tele, big, giant television screens? There are people sitting here going, you know, and there are other of us, others of us going, we love each other. We will work it out. Okay, we will work it out for the betterment of the work of Jesus, 
not because of my comfort or your comfort. But what is it that God is calling us to do? Well, my second quote, because I said to Renee, you know, they don't want to sit and listen to, uh, to me all morning because they've already listened to each other, and that's the message. Well, there was another wise man who lived in the last century, and his name was A.A. A. Milne. And depending on how old you are, some of you may have grown up with a little character, our favorite bear, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, Winnie the Pooh. Great wisdom in, in those books if you're paying attention. And I want to close this morning with our time of visioning with this thing that we all need to remember. Christopher Robin is talking to Pooh, and he says this to him. Promise me you will always remember you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. And as Christians, we say, because God walks with us. Amen. And as the choir comes to sing this morning, this is one of the hymn arrangements we will be using at the Choral Festival. And at the last verse, I'll indicate um, we wish that you would join and stand with us in singing the final stanza of Holy, Holy, Holy with us. <coughs>
when we come to a time in our worship service when we consider our offering. We don't just consider it because of particular blessings we feel, but because of general blessings we feel, the general blessing of being alive, being here, being able to get up, because we know there are many of our friends who no longer can do that. We're not just here for us, we're here for them. And so as we come to, to offer to God a portion of what we've been blessed with, I like what Teresa always says, God is good all the time. God is good. Let's worship with our tithes and offerings. Loving God, you give us so much. Open our eyes that we may see your blessings each day and make us willing to share as this offering becomes part of your work here on earth. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So every now and then, uh, I come in on Sunday morning and I get a surprise. And uh, sometimes I don't get the surprise in time. And so about three weeks ago, I got up here to the communion table and I went, oh my, there's no communion for me. Well, I couldn't find a, 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 an easy way to signal William to bring something around. Hey, William, bring something around. So uh, I faked it, okay? 
So this morning I came in, and I was all prepared and everything. I got here, and there are these boxes on the communion table, and I went, goodness, what are those? They have hinges on them, so they must open. And I'm sure at Elders we probably said something about this. Uh, It's just that I was thinking about other things. And uh, lo and behold, sure enough, we did say something at Elders about it because inside our communion, little communion kits that the elders are going to be taking to our homebound folks so that when they uh, are watching online or are together with the elders, they can partake of communion. And as I was thinking about that this morning, I said, you know, this other communion meditation can just wait because this is important. We don't realize that we are more than who is sitting here. We are even more than who is watching us through the cameras. What we do here, we do not just for ourselves, but we do for the world. This is part of our mission, taking communion, not just for me and what I believe about the bread and the cup, but believing even for those who don't believe. Because this table is for everybody. And it goes this way and this way and this way and this way. And God invites all of us to be gathered around it. Let's come and share in the wonderful feast. Let us pray. Dear Father, we know the importance of faith in our lives and we praise you for you alone are worthy. Be our vision and guide so that we may learn your way and remember that you are the giver of life. You feed our souls and nourish our hearts. Let this table be a learning place for us. We come now to bless this bread and drink this cup and to remember Jesus Christ who came to forgive and to heal. May we learn to live as Christ would have us live. Amen. We gather around this table, we remember the first time that followers of Jesus gathered around a table like this. During the course of their supper together, which would be their last one, Jesus took his bread and broke it after he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, this is my body that's for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And after supper, he took his cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Whenever you drink this, remember me. And as I read this week, whenever we are searching for God, we sometimes find ourselves, when we're seeking ourselves, We sometimes find God. Let us stand and pray together the prayer 
brings us together in the memory of Jesus, the prayer he taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to hear our hymn of departure, let us remember that Jesus has called us to commitment. We may not all be able to join a vision team. We may not all be able to be leaders in the church, but our prayers count. And prayer, many times, is the first and strongest thing that we can do as we move forward. You are invited to join this church, not just as a member, but as a fellow prayer and worshiper and visioner. Let's come together as we hear our last hymn. Almighty God, your love sets us free to truly love and grow. Thank you for our church with its caring, compassionate, and serving family. Kindle within our hearts an underlying gratitude for strength and hope. Give us the power to imagine our future and the courage to honor our past. Help us build on our past as we work together as one body. Grant us wisdom and foresight to remain faithful during the course of our journey. Enable the search committee to feel a unity of purpose from the love and support of the congregation. Amen. And so now we go into the world to be the hands and the feet and the voice, the very body of Christ. Let us go in peace. Amen.